appreciate everybody being here as well. Um, uh, another good day, just finished practice number six. So I mentioned last week, gave our guys the weekend off. So they had Easter weekend off. Hope everyone had a great Easter. Uh, guys well, had a great practice last Thursday, then Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, back at it yesterday and uh, with meetings and, and lifting. And then back in the uh, back on the practice field today, that's a lot of situational work done today. Some more third down work, introduced uh, short yardage goal lines. So we had some live goal line reps at the end of practice, which is always good to uh, increase the energy and the competitive spirit at practice. Uh, so I like the way these guys are working uh, without a doubt. And, and uh, over a third of the way done with spring practice, got a lot of work to do, but like the start that we've had so far, uh, nothing really, uh, hope, no, not too much to add injury-wise. The only new addition that'll be out for the rest of the spring is Bradley Dunn, had a little bit of an ankle injury that uh, is gonna keep him from being able to finish the next three weeks of spring practice. Uh, nothing long-term, he'll be back and, and be fine by this summer, but he just won't be able to finish spring practice. Brad's done a good job for us getting reps at running back and then did a lot of good things on special teams for us last season. So obviously our running back depth is thin right now with um, Juju. Obviously we'd already talked about being out for the rest of the spring. Now Brad out for the rest of the spring. Rocket was already out with uh, his shoulder injury going into spring practice. So we're getting pretty thin. Uh, there right now, but uh, Jaworn Howe and, and Oscar Attaway are, are healthy and, and getting the bulk of the reps right now and doing a great job. So we will uh, be back out on the field Thursday, introduce a little bit of red zone work on Thursday, or a lot of red zone work on Thursday, and then we'll have our first uh, uh, scrimmage of the spring on, um, on Saturday morning as well, followed by our uh, uh, annual Ladies' Day for all the fantastic uh, ladies that want to take part, we've had it done it the last two years, been awesome attendance, a lot of fun, still open for anyone that wants to come. I think I'm saying that right. If it's sold out and we've already cut off registration, I apologize, but I think we still have room uh, as well. So we'll do that on Saturday and no better way to cap off the Saturday than Ladies Day uh, as well. Hopefully at that time, we're also celebrating Coach Staley and our women's team's first win up in Cleveland, and then they'll be getting ready for the national championship the next day as well. So congratulations to Coach Staley and her team, and what an awesome run uh, they were on. Got to get two more here this weekend, but so much respect for them and, and just uh, every single week to be, or every single game to be able to get the uh, best shot of the opponent and still just uh, continue to respond week after week. So a ton of respect for them, cheering hard for them, and, and uh, excited for the opportunity they'll have this weekend. And with that, questions? Is David on strike, or what is going on with David Kloniger, man? <laughs> My lord, Gene Sapikoff retires, and does David just quits coming to the press conferences? They don't play till Friday. <laughs> From Albany? Yeah, I guess so. Heck of a trip in the Northeast, huh? So apologies, David. I uh, hope the uh, Northeast is treating you well and making sure, making you appreciate the South even more. Shane, with uh, the scrimmage on Saturday, what are some of the main things you're kind of looking to see, um, you know, in the first scrimmage of the year? Yeah, um, a lot. You know, one, just guys being able to get out there and, and uh, execute and be efficient without coaches on the field and, and coaching every single play, just letting our guys be able to get out there and play a little bit would be for one. Uh, we've done a little bit of – uh, live tackling work um, in a couple of our practices already this spring and and whatnot. So, but it'll be the first day where the entire day is you know tackling and playing it like a game. Uh, we'll have SEC officials that'll be out there on Saturday. So, our guys, can we play you know f somewhat? you know, uh, penalty free, there's going to be penalties, but hopefully we get in that stadium and we don't have a lot of the pre snap penalties and things like that, that we can control. And then really just guys, how guys respond. And, and we talk a lot about when we go across the street into that stadium, the, our mentality and what an opportunity and blessing it is to be able to go into Williams Bryce stadium. And some people, whether, uh, it's, 80,000 people in there or a Saturday morning with about 50 people in there. A lot of guys, they just they flip a switch and they and they rise to the occasion, if you will, and uh, eager to see who really just, you know, steps up because we got some great competitive battles going on in a lot of different positions and and um, it'll be the morning time. So the lights won't be on. But, you know, figure of speech wise, when the lights come on, who responds? And uh, that's what I'm eager to see. 
Shane, piggybacking off of that, whether it be the scrimmage on Saturday or just how things have been going in practice so far this spring, what's that transition been like with Joe D. Camillus coming in? Because, you know, maybe he has different philosophies in terms of how he wants to do things, and yeah. maybe it's trying to mesh with what you have from a philosophy standpoint. And obviously for these players, the last couple of years, they've been learning from a different coach. So what's that process been like? It's been a, uh, a learning process for sure, what he coaches, what he teaches, what he wants. And then we've tried to marry, you know, a lot of the stuff that we did here previously with Pete. Uh, there's things when I met with Joe and, and, and when we hired Joe that I talked about, you know, look, I, I'm a big believer in this, you know. I want to continue to call it this, whether it be a team or a technique or a scheme or whatever it might be. But for the most part, I want him to be able to, you know, I hired him for a reason, and I want him to be able to implement him, his system. And there's certainly, there's a lot of carryover, but there's a lot of things um, um, technique-wise that are a little bit different as well. Meetings, as I mentioned before, are intense. The practice field's intense. And um, the, comp the competition out there is, is really high and intense. So it's been great, certainly high energy. I think they've connected well with Joe. He's really done a good job of connecting well with them. It's great being able to, you know, he can show, okay, we're doing this drill today, and here's Aaron Donald from the L.A. Rams doing the same drill on field goal block, or here is so-and-so on this kickoff cover drill that we're going to do today or whatever it might be. So being able to show NFL practice clips of here's the pros doing it and here's what we do has been good. And I think it's been a good transition. We've probably done a little bit more, um, not less drill work. We still do a lot of drill work, but probably a little bit more just 11-on-11 11 11 work in the spring. And a lot of guys are getting reps, and it's really going to be good for our just overall development, the amount of guys that are getting reps in, in a team-type setting, 11-on-11 11 11 setting. Has there been any separation in the quarterback competition? And besides perfection, what do you want to see from your quarterback Saturday? Uh, I wouldn't say separation. And those guys are continuing to battle. Obviously, when you talk about <clears throat> uh, going in the stadium and guys being able to separate themselves, that's a position that they'll all get a lot of reps on Saturday and um, a lot of reps. And they'll get an opportunity to kind of show how they handle operating the offense with the coaches not out there telling them everything and, and coaching every single rep. Uh, so I think there, you know, some guys will, there'll be some separation on Saturday, I would imagine, just because how, you know, how we're going to set it up. And, and you hope there is, but there's great competition going in there. A lot of those guys are getting reps and they're all competing and making each other better. Uh, the biggest thing, Phil, I would say is just one, how they operate. Okay, they're in the stadium now and it's a scrimmage, game like setting with officials and everything. How, uh, you know, do, can, can, can guys operate? Can they, run the offense and, and communicate and the things that you have to do. And then certainly protecting the, protecting the ball. They've done a really good job of that as the head coach. You know, you love it when there's a lot of turnovers from a defensive standpoint because they're taking the ball away. And then you don't like it as an offensive coach or as a head coach because the offense is turning the ball over too much. And then when the offense doesn't turn it over, you're excited for the offense, but you're like, man, we got to continue to take the ball away like we've done a great job of defensively. But the last two practices, um, we've uh, we've done a really good job offensively of uh, protecting the football. I think there was one turnover today, I didn't one interception today, but it was a ball that got kind of ricocheted, bang bang play with a receiver and a DB, and the ball popped up in the air, and and it was a DQ Smith run into the ball and made an interception. But for the most part, the quarterbacks have done a good job of making good decisions, and want to see them continue to just uh, uh, do that on Saturday for sure. Will any of those quarterbacks be live on Saturday? It's a good question. Um, I was thinking about that last night, Hale. Um, I don't know yet. We've done that in the past, in the springtime and August. You know, last year we did in the scrimmages. We made uh, everyone but Spencer and Luke were live and we tackled. And it was good for them to understand that, you know, you don't – if the, we've got five guys blocking and the defense brings a sixth guy, you're going to get hit and you can't sit there and hang on to the ball. So it's good for them to learn from that standpoint. Uh, some of those quarterbacks love it because I blew the whistle today one time and Robbie Ashford was mad at me because he didn't think there was any way that the defender would have been able to make a sa make that tackle in a real game. Um, and uh, Lenoris really stepped up last year in those situations where we made him live. So it's something that we'll talk about as a staff. I know it's a long answer to say, I don't know yet. <laughs> and uh, at receiver with, with all those new faces, how? 
how has that gone uh, with that group? And, and do you feel like you have like a certain number of guys that are sort of first group? Type yeah, of I think um, still trying to figure it out. You know, you think about it, we're over a third of the way through, but we're not not even halfway done with spring ball. So I think those guys right now were guys continue to flash um, at times. You know, I would say that Gage is somebody that every day I've noticed for something, whether it be um, getting a great release off the line of scrimmage or a catch and run. You know, guys that were freshmen last year, like Tyshawn Russell, he's flashed. Um, I think all those guys have at times. So I think for them right now, it's continuing to learn what to do, tr trying to eliminate the clutter out of their heads so they can just go play fast and, and not have to think so much. But I think all those guys are doing a great job and to sit there and say, okay, these are our top four right now. We're not to that point. I bet you if you asked every offensive coach, okay, who, are, who would be the top six receivers right now if we played a game, I bet you you'd get different answers from all of them because I think they've all done a good job of, of uh, competing and eager to see you know, what, what they do when the ball gets in their hands on Saturday. Hey, Shane, you mentioned that, uh, you know, the spring break schedule at South Carolina had a lot to do with how you scheduled the spring practice. But with the portal opening on April 15th, did that, you know, at all influence your decision? Or does that even matter that it's opening and you guys are still in spring practice? Um, I think there's a lot when you set the spring practice schedule. I, I love it, but I'm in a unique state where no matter when we make the spring game, half the fan base is going to be ticked off at me because it's either the Masters weekend or the Heritage weekend. And if it's the Masters weekend, everybody's mad. How could you do the spring game the weekend of the Masters? And if you do it the weekend of the Heritage and Hilton Head, they're mad at me. How could you do the spring game the same weekend as the Heritage and Hilton Head? So that enters your thinking a little bit. So this weekend, this year, it's the same weekend as the Heritage. So I apologize um, to that segment of the fan base. It's not happy about that. Um, I think it was a little bit – certainly I thought about the portal when it's opening, but it is what it is. Um, I really just kind of liked it that we have the spring game and then literally the spring game is Saturday and our last day of class is on Monday. So it's literally 48 hours – not even 48 hours after the spring game's over. It's the last day of class. I think it's Monday this year, but it's that week uh, as well. So I like just being able to finish spring – excuse me, finish spring practice and then end of the semester and they go right into exams. We're having kind of our exit meetings as well. <clears throat> and then going back to the beginning of spring practice, probably the biggest thing that we just pushed it back was giving our guys an extra week in the weight room after spring break. You know, So we've always done our off-season conditioning, winter workouts, weight room plan, January, February. They'd go, they would go on spring break, and then they'd come back from spring break, and then it was right into practice on like Tuesday. So this year we said, let's give these guys – as much as I like to think when they were in, I think Luke Doty went to Cancun. Luke may have, but as much as I like to think when our players were in Mexico or wherever else that they were working out and they were training for spring practice the next week, they probably weren't. Uh, so instead of just throwing them right back into it, let's give them a week to kind of reacclimate to the weight room, running, get ramp up, and then be ready to roll right into spring practice the following week. And gives us an extra week in the weight room physically and gives us another week in the meeting room to continue to learn with so many new players that are learning a system offense defense and special teams for the first time so it's a combination of golf class schedules and uh, physical uh, ramping up for spring practice I think Carolina Cup was a factor at one point yeah I think so that was yeah there's, there's a lot there's a lot man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the things they don't tell you about when you're when you become a head coach all the things you have to balance yeah, I, I got a couple more for you. With with Kelton Henderson no longer being on the yeah. roster, is, was that his decision, y'all's decision? Can you? Share that was it? our decision. Um, think a lot of Kelton, wish him well, but there's a uh, expectation level of how we're going to do things in this program, uh, inside this building and outside this building, and and um, just a body of work that wasn't what we wanted as well. And uh, care about him, want to help him in any way. Told him I would call anybody for him. He's a guy that has ability and, and be pulling for him, but just he won't be here. And so far, he's the only departure from the roster yes. this point in spring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and at defensive end, with, with, again, a lot of new faces, how, how has that gone in particular with Gilbert, who's, I guess, not new per se, but how has he integrated back into things? Really good. Like a lot more, um, a lot more depth for sure. You know, when you talk about, okay, we lost uh, Jordan Strawn and then Tyreek as well um uh, uh 
but when you look at who you return guys that are a year older that were freshmen last season like Desmond, you bring in a guy like a Dylan Stewart, and then you bring in, you know, transfers like Kyle Kennard. It's just – it's an athletic group. They look the part. Um, there's more depth in that room, and that's another one that uh, we'll be able to play a lot more guys on Saturday, and uh, I think we're going to be even more disruptive at that position than what we were last year in regards to stopping the run and being able to rush the passer also. Shane, you kind of talked about this a couple of weeks ago with Nick Harbor, and we've seen him pop up in the limited practices that we have an opportunity to go to. There's been six. I don't, you know, you don't have to give me an exact number, but how many of those practices do you feel like he has been at? And outside of obviously his obligations, both as a student athlete, um, has he been popping up trying to catch some passes? We've heard Lenore say that they've gone out maybe twice a week. Obviously, with there's so many new faces in the wide receiver room, yeah. just trying to develop that rapport. Do you have any idea if he's been able to do that? Yeah, I believe so in regards to he and Lenoris and, and other guys being able to do stuff on their own. He and uh, Coach Furry being able to do kind of stuff on their own within the rules and whatever Nick wants to do. But when he's when, – when class isn't conflicting with his schedule, he's here. You know, so obviously the weekends – I think the last two weekends they've had track meets last week. I think they were in Florida and the weekend before they were here. So he hasn't been around on Saturdays. We weren't here this Saturday, but he hasn't really been around on the weekends. Um, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday are days that, that we meet and lift as well for the morning. So he's working around class schedule on that, but it works out pretty good for the practice days. He was here today um, as well. And, and he's adamant about being a great football player. And it's not like – when he's here, oh, my God, Nick's in the building and all that. It's just what you kind of expect and walk in. There he is sitting in front row in the team meeting or second row in the team meeting right in the middle and and uh, involved. So he wants to give his all to track and, and be the very best he can be there for those guys. But then he also wants to be his very best for football and, and uh, give everything he can to football also. You mentioned the the running back depth is, is a little thin right now with the injuries, but with Oscar and Jawarn, what have you seen from them? And is there kind of, you know, I assume that they're taking these spring practices and thinking, okay, you know, this is going to give us a, a better chance to compete in the fall and, and possibly get on the field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really been impressed with those guys. Um, you know, obviously Oscar's an older guy that's been around, so he's he's got a great you know maturity and mindset about himself and and all business as well. You can tell he's played a lot of football. Jawarn obviously was a decorated player last year at South Carolina State, but you forget he's still a freshman and a year out of high school, so he's still very raw and learning. But two unique skill sets. Uh, those guys are just steady. They don't say a whole lot. They don't get too high or too low. Uh, but they both, you know, we did a live five-play goal line period today, offense versus defense, put the ball down on like the one-yard line and a half and just best out of five. And, you know, they had a couple runs in there that, to me, showed what they're about. Downhill, put their face in there and, and uh, would, would, would not be denied in regards to trying to get it in the end zone. So, like what those guys are about and, and how they continue to get better. And, and uh, both are going to be really, really good players for us this season as well. You mentioned Dylan Stewart a minute ago. What has stood out about him so far as he's works to get acclimated to college ball? Probably just the natural God-given size and ability. Um, size, he's, he's big. He can run. He can jump. He's physical. Um, he's just uh, – uh, he, he's not your typical freshman without a doubt, and, and obviously he was very highly recruited for a reason, but he's another one that you don't, you don't notice him. He just, he's just out there. You notice him, but you don't notice him in regards for the wrong reasons. He's just kind of steady, does his job day in, day out, and, <clears throat> and uh, has fit in well with that group. And um, to me, just continuing to learn the, the techniques that we want to play with and, and the techniques that we're coaching and the effort that we want to play with, but doing a lot of really good things for us out there right now. Shane, kind of talk about the red zone a little more. When you look back at last year, how would you kind of evaluate, assess the way you guys were able to, you know, handle those types of spots? And then, you know, with this year, with those types of situations, are you guys trying to do anything maybe like different or anything, uh, you know, to have more success in those spots? Yeah, um, you know, I think overall uh, weren't good enough. If you just look at 
our record and whatnot. We didn't do a lot of things well enough last season, but in regards to being able to finish drives, you know, I think we had our moments, but certainly games like North Carolina stand out where I think we were, I think we were inside the 20 yard line three times and didn't score, if I'm not mistaken as well. So being able to get down there and then finish and then defensively, you know, a team's going to get down there, but when they do, you got to, you know, hold them to field goals and, and try and keep points off the board in general. So, um, you know, certainly need to be better uh, without a doubt. Every year is different looking at scheme, offense and defense as far as what you're going to do. Each week's different depending on teams and what their philosophy is in the red zone. Are you playing a defense that they're going to pressure you once you cross the 20-yard line? Are you playing a team that they're going to rush for and play coverage and, and make you make throws, you know, so every week is different. But overall, got to be better. We got to make sure we come out of there with points, preferably um, preferably touchdowns without a doubt. So we'll certainly there'll be some schematic tweaks week to week and year to year. Um, and then practice wise, nothing, nothing too crazy. You know, a couple little tweaks, not this week, but next week that we'll do in practice just to kind of make the offense defense uh, a little bit more of a competitive period when we do the red zone and um, kind of a point system for the defense and a point system for the offense where you can compete and have a winner offense defense down there that 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 we're going to implement this year for the first time just in practice. But overall, just got to coach it better and play better down there. When when Clayton was in here a couple weeks ago and he was talking about being flexible between the four four down three down stuff, how, how do you guys try to structure that? This time of year, when when you're, I guess, two different types of schemes at, in yeah. a way, is there like, hey, one day we're we're gonna do just this stuff, and two days we'll do that. Like, how does that? Start? Yeah, not great question. It's it's a little bit of uh, you know, defensively, it may be a thing where all right, the defense is gonna rep both today, but not both of them against the offense. And like in the last week, Hale, it was or the first week even, and last week it was all right when we do this period versus the offense. Defense, you're only going to play four down this period. This period, you can play three down. Or this period, the first four plays, defense is going to be four down. <clears throat> Next three, four plays are going to be three down. Uh, so it's kind of each day is different. And a lot of that is based on um, what you're installing too. So today was a big short yardage goal line emphasis day. So you're probably not going to do a lot of, you know, three, three stuff on that day. Um, but being able to being able to mix it both up. And I'm not saying that we're, the defense is aligning for the offense to be able to go execute, but just so the offense knows, okay, we're going to get a bulk of this this period, we're going to get a bulk of that next period. All the while, the defense being able to get done what they need to get done from an installation standpoint also. So both. Uh, we're, we want to be multiple and be able to bounce in and out of it, but <clears throat> also get a good – we're not trying to win a game this Saturday. We're trying to – Develop our guys and figure out, you know, who can do what for us. Also, from a personnel standpoint. All righty, thank you guys. Take care.